Okay, I've been getting a lot of comments from people about uh, demon possession and demonic oppression. Now, the thing is this, is that it is very possible that demonic spirits can oppress and even possess a saved Christian. It is very, very possible. So, a Christian, he must get ready for all sorts of attacks by demonic spirits. So, these demonic spirits, they can attack a saved Christian who loves the Lord, who reads the Bible, and who prays. And here's a Christian who goes out for the Lord, fighting for the Lord. But then demonic spirits, they can oppress, attack, and even possess. So a lot, I've been getting a lot of comments and emails and phone calls of people who suffered these kind of attacks from demons, and they requested help for that. So I referred them to some videos, but in this video, I'm going to make it very simple. So this is the methods of what you can do to fight spiritually, okay? Demonic spiritual warfare is real, folks. This is real. It's a serious business, and you want to be armed against demonic attacks. Now, you want help, then this is, these are the verses that can help. A lot of people who go through disabilities went through this a lot. A lot of people who went through drugs went through this a lot. Not only that, people who went through dark addictions, I mean dark addictions, actually felt some kind of demonic oppression and spirit. This can be anger issues. It can be sexual issues, etc., etc., so here are the verses that can be helpful. First of all is Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Notice what scares demonic spirits and makes them scream and run away. Chapter 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So that's for speaking of Satan and his minions, right? But look at verse 11. And they overcame him. How they overcame these uh, demonic spirits? By the what? The blood of the Lamb. That is so important. Plead the blood. You need to plead the blood. Now, I've been getting comments from people and phone calls like, well, how do you plead the blood? Pleading the blood is found at 1 John. So go to 1 John 1. 1 John 1, 7 and 9. 1 John 1, 7 and 9. This is how you plead the blood. It's through prayer, see? It's through prayer. It's through prayer and confession. Confessing whatever dark thing you're struggling, whatever demonic thing you're going through, and then having that blood of Christ to cleanse it all away. So you need to confess that to the Lord. I mean, make it specific. You need to make it specific, specific as you can what you're exactly picturing in your head, what you're exactly feeling in your body, what exactly you're going through. Make it so vivid, so specific to the Lord. That way the Lord and then the blood will be much more applicable. It will. It really will. It does that. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. See that? The blood of Christ cleanses it. But what's the context here? Through confession. Look at verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That cleansing... What cleanses it? Verse 7, the blood. See that? So any unrighteous thing at verse 9, any unrighteous, unholy, blasphemous, wicked, dark thing that you're going through, that blood of Christ can cleanse it. But it's done through confession. So you need to confess that to the Lord, exactly what sin or what unclean thing you're going through, and then have the blood of Christ, and then say, Lord, I plead all those things under the blood of Christ and ask that you wash it away. So you need to do that. But this has to be done daily, okay? This kind of, when you pray to the Lord, it's not just, oh, one time and it's magically gone. No, you don't, that's not how it works. You need to keep praying fervently. Because look at this one, look at Luke, the book of Luke. Uh, Mark, excuse me, Mark 9.29, Mark 9.29. Oh, by the way, I showed you this before in our other video. But this is the verse 
the only verse in the Bible that teaches you how to conquer demonic attacks. Fasting and praying. And guess what? Modern Bibles, take that out. Maybe that explains why a lot of them are demon-possessed. <laughs> Anyways, Mark 9.29. Mark 9.29. Now, I'm not saying all of them are. Don't, don't, get, don't act like a bunch of sissies and modern version scholars. Say, oh, he's saying I'm demon-possessed, blah, blah, blah. Look, don't act sissies. I'm not saying all of you are. I'm just saying it's very possible. <laughs> all right. But only you and the Lord, just self-reflect yourself, okay? I'm, I'm not accusing you. I'm just saying you need to self-reflect yourself. And if you self-reflect yourself, then maybe you might find something that you never thought of before. Now look at Mark 9, 29. And he said unto them, this kind, meaning this kind of demon. So this demon was really bad, this devil, really bad and oppressive. Can come forth, it can't go out by nothing, but by what? Prayer and fasting. So you think that's just one time or you think that's consistent? That is consistent, see that? So when you plead that blood, it has to be done consistently. Now, if you add fasting on top of that, it becomes even a double whammy. It becomes, uh, trust me, when you do fasting and prayer, it becomes very powerful. Not only that, you really feel that spiritual conflict. That flesh and that mind is screaming out. All that uncleanness is exposed. And you really see the dark side. And then you get even closer to the spiritual side by exposing the dark side. And you cling more on to prayer and prayer. Focusing all on prayer and pleading the blood and pleading the blood. And finding anything else to pray about. And finding other specific things to pray about. And then all that uncleanness is exposed and purified, cleaned off by the blood. Another thing is to claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 10. And I mean the full name of Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 17. Use the full name of our Lord. Full name of Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Notice what the Word of God says right here. How this spirit, how these demons left. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the dev devils are subject unto us through thy what? Name. So notice that the name of God, you can cast out demons. Now, I recommend the full name is not just part of the name, not just say Jesus is. You ever heard of these charismatic preachers? You know, I cast thee out in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, blah, 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 blah. You ever heard them do that? No, 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 don't do that. Use the full name of the Lord. Now, you might say, what's the full name of the Lord? Go by his entire Godhead and Trinity. It's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord would refer to the Father, Jesus would refer to the Son, Christ would refer to the Spirit. Because Spirit means anointed. That's where anointed, where Spirit comes from. Christ refers to that. Jesus is obviously referring to the Son because that's His name. The Lord is obviously referring to the Father because all Old Testament passages, when Jesus talked about the Lord, would be referring to the Father. So that's why we see right here, always pronounce it. Uh, I, I use these, this full name. Why? Because I want the entire Godhead and Trinity on my side. That's why. I feel more safe doing that. So I would proclaim the all three persons of the Godhead to block me, to shield me. Okay, so Luke 10 verse 17. Another one is to, if we're going to close it here, the final passage, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Now this one is really important that you want to write down. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 13. Full, and I mean full, armor of God. You need the full armor of God. People only put partial armor. And because of partial armor, you give an opening somewhere for the devil to attack. You want to be armed fully. That way it gives no space for the devil to attack and it can bounce off. But you, but you only get partial. So let's say there's this 1% area. 
that you're not armed in, the devil is looking for something. Block, 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 block. Oh, there's an opening. And then he's going to go here to attack you. You don't want that. So what's the full armor, Pastor? I really want to know. Good. So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you what it is. It's a very important passage on what to do. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Let's first look at the full armor. Verse 11. Put on the what? Whole armor. If you don't have it whole, then what? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can't then. Let's also look at verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the what? Whole armor of God. If you don't, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You won't be able to stand against Satan. Now, what is the whole armor of God? Here are the specifics that you want to know. Number one, uh, verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. The belt of truth. Why? Because the strength of a man is in his loins. See that? That's why a lot of people, if you want to attack a man's weak spot, it would be that area, right? The loins. So that's where all the strength lies upon. So that's why you want to attack that area. Uh, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Oh, so belt of truth. So you have to live a life of honesty and sincerity. See that? If your life is not honest and sincere and there's some stuff you're hiding, that you're lying, that you're sneaking, especially a lot of false pastors out there on the internet, uh, husbands with their wives and wives with their husbands and children to their parents. Shall I go on and on and on? This is not a sermon, but you get my drift. You get my point. So the thing is, you have to arm yourself like that. If not, you give an opening. Breastplate of righteousness. So holiness. That's why we don't believe we really abstain from the world. See, that's why we stress a lot about worldliness. That's worldly, so that's not right as a Christian. That's fleshy. Uh, we need to be holy and pure. How uh, boys goes, go out with girls too. See, you have to make it as a holy conduct. Holy conduct. That's, oh, you're too, you're too conservative, you know. You're too formal. You're, you're too legalistic. You can call it that way, but that's why you give so many openings for Satan, right? No wonder you're struggling with something sexual. Why? Because you, you keep dressing that way. You keep looking at those things in movies or playing those games or how you hang around with the opposite sex. Shall I go on? See that? I mean, you give an opening. Breastplate of righteousness. Now, I can go on and on, but I ain't preaching a sermon, so let's go to the next one. Verse 15, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Do you, gospel of peace. So, do you do witnessing? Why? Because wherever your feet goes, you should be ready to say, are you saved? Do you know how to go to heaven? Pass out a track? See that? So, your feet shod with the gospel of peace. Witnessing. Another thing is, verse 16, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So here you are, you got to make sure that you've got to have a shield of faith. Because when you have this shield of faith, this shield of faith blocks the attacks of the enemies. It's by faith you can block attacks of the enemy. Satan starts attacking you with the suffering, right? And then you start to think, why God? Why God? See that? That's not faith. And you invite attacks in your life. But when you go by faith that all things work together for good, it's going to be all right. Oh, I lost my house. I lost my money. I lost my job. I, I lost my friends. I, I lost my family. You know, my whole family turned against me. But I know everything's all right because God's going to take care of it. That's why you're still going to survive. But when you get discouraged and whine and complain and then you cry, then boom, you invited him to attack you. Faith is so essential. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. So you got to be saved in Jesus Christ and have the helmet of salvation. Why? Because all it takes is for the enemy to chop off your head and it's game over. See that? So once you're saved in Jesus Christ, you have a foundation laid where you can block other attacks. But if you're not saved, then your head is chopped off automatically by the enemy, no matter how many good works you do in your life. The next one, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's your only offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit. That's your only offensive weapon to attack Satan. 
Oh, why, why do you believe in dispensationalism truth? Why do you believe the King James Bible is perfect? All other modern versions are not. Why do you argue for pre-trib rapture? Uh, why do you argue this and that? You know why that's important? Because this is all biblical truth. And your only offensive weapon to attack the enemy. If you don't have that, and you have wrong doctrine, see that? And you got a wrong Bible. See that? You have a flimsy weapon where you will never, ever stab the enemy. You ever wonder why these churches today are not aggressive now? These churches are all passive and acting like little women or something like that. And then let's share and love and, you know, let's think about building a community and socializing. And they can't. And when the liberals start attacking them, the Christians just go, oh, you know, uh, we can't do anything about it, blah, blah, blah. No, you need to fight, man. You will not. You need to learn to pick up a sword and fight and expose that heresy. Say this liberal teaching is wrong and get some guts out there. No wonder you're dying. Your churches are dying because we don't have people who will fight. Now I can preach a sermon on that for sixty minutes long, but I'm not going to do that. All right. So you see that? You ever wonder why Satan won? Now you ever wonder why you go through demonic oppression and even demon possession? Because you miss so many essential things. So, spiritual warfare, you need this. You need the full armor. You need to plead the blood. You need to fast and pray. Proclaim it in the full name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.